most common question I get during my Q&A sessions is, Ian, what about carbon-14 dating? Now, most people misunderstand carbon-14 and how it works. They think it gives ages of millions of years. No, no, that's rock dating methods. I covered those in rant number 100. Now, carbon dating is used to date once living things. It doesn't work on rocks. Or does it? Carbon-14 is radioactive. It mixes with oxygen, forming a radioactive form of carbon dioxide. Plants, of course, eat carbon dioxide, so the plants take in the carbon dioxide. Animals eat the plants, we eat the animals and the plants, therefore everything takes in this amount of radioactive carbon into their system. Congratulations! Maybe you didn't know this, but... You are radioactive! Carbon-14, of course, being radioactive, is heavy and unstable. Eventually, it emits a beta radiation and thus converts back into nitrogen. Now, when you die... I hate you, God. I hate everything you stand for. You stink. The thing I hate about you the most is that you don't even exist. I'm going to prove to the world just how much I hate you and just how much you don't exist. I demand that you strike me dead with lightning right now. Hmm, just what I thought. He's a pansy. He doesn't exist. And the Toronto Maple Leafs suck! What? You didn't know God was a Leafs fan? Anyway, obviously when you die, you stop taking in this radioactive form of carbon. So, the radioactive carbon that's now in your body begins to break down radioactively, turning back into nitrogen. So years later, scientists can come along and take a sample of your remains. Oh yes, this way can excellent sample right here. <laughs> so by measuring the amount of carbon-14 in the sample, we can take a guess as to how long you've been dead. Now, carbon-14 breaks down very quickly. It has a half-life of only 5,700 years. Within 100,000 years, it's completely gone. Now remember that number, 100,000 years, no carbon-14. If it's 100,000 years old, there will be no carbon-14. There are a number of problems with the assumptions behind the carbon-14 dating method. For example, calibration, similar to what I discussed in rant number 100. However, probably to the surprise of many skeptics, I am going to ignore those things today and focus strictly on what the dates actually show us. In the end, carbon-14 dating will probably wind up being the creationist's friend. Now, because of the assumptions behind carbon-14 dating, I don't think it's entirely accurate. However, I think it's probably fair to say it's probably accurate within, say, a factor of 10. The Paluxy River in Glen Rose, Texas is famous for fossil dinosaur and human footprints. Now I'll deal with the human footprints of rant number 65, but I will make use of them to make a point today. We also occasionally find colified wood in these rock layers. Now because of the dinosaur tracks, these rocks are considered 100 million years old. Yet when we carbon date the wood fragments embedded in the rock layer, we invariably get ages of between 5,000 and 50,000 years old. So, which is the correct age then? The human footprints, which indicated is very recent. The carbon-14 dates, which say it's 5,000 years old. The carbon-14 dates, which say it's 50,000 years old. Or the assigned age of 100 million years, given to it because of the dinosaur tracks. Is it possible, just possible, that the alleged history of billions of years of Earth's history is actually fiction? Nobody ever stops to question the 100 million year old age of the dinosaur tracks. An age which, by the way, was just made up. There's no way to prove that age. So what then do the old earthers do with the radiocarbon ages which indicate that those rock layers are actually very young? Well, if you watch rant number 100, you already know the answer. Drum roll, please. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it. Thank God there's a way to reject our scientific dates when they don't line up with evolutionary theory. Unless, of course, those scientific dates disprove those pesky creationists, in which case they must be correct and must be fact. So here's the thing. This is hardly an isolated case. You remember the age at which we have no carbon-14? 
100,000 years, right? Good, you were taking notes. 100,000 years old and older, we should have zero carbon-14 remaining in the sample. Yet, no matter where we take samples in the geologic record, no matter what the evolutionary assigned age of that sample, it always comes back with lots and lots of carbon-14 in it. This tells us that those samples are much younger than 100,000 years old, in spite of the fact that the samples come from dinosaur bones, allegedly 100 million years old, wood fragments from 230 to 100 million years ago, according to the alleged evolutionary age, coal, allegedly 300 million years old, carbon dioxide, allegedly 500 million years old, crude oil, allegedly 300 million years old, natural gas, allegedly 300 million years old, even diamonds, with an alleged age of 1 to 3 billion years old, with a capital B, still have lots of carbon-14 in them. And of course the critics just simply accuse the creationists of sloppy science and contaminating the samples. Well, actually, excess carbon-14 in the geologic record has been reported on in the secular literature for decades. Groups like the Rate Team and Hugh Miller just took it and ran with it. Now because of the technical aspect of the subject and the fact that I'm trying to keep this video short, I'll let you do your homework yourself, but I will give you a few hints and references at the end of this video so you can do your own homework and see for yourself just how preposterous the suggestion of contamination really is. For example, the rate team when they sampled coal seams took the coal and put it in a sealed barrel purged with nitrogen that removed all air and thus removed any carbon-14 in the barrel. Obviously, the skeptics did not pull out their calculators nor their brains when they criticized the rate team. If they had actually done the math, they would have realized that even if the barrel was full of air, and thus contaminated with carbon-14, in fact, even if the entire lump of coal, the entire sample, had absorbed its own volume of air, that still would not have accounted for the excessive amount of carbon-14 in the coal. There's so much carbon-14 in the coal, it cannot be accounted for by contamination. Other skeptics claim that the C-14 found in the coal seams was actually contamination from underground uranium sources. Again, apparently they did not put brain in gear before engaging mouth because they didn't do the math and the calculations. In order to get this extremely high amount of carbon-14 in the coal samples, the coal would have had to have been approximately 99% uranium. Well, that's not coal, that's uranium. In fact, Sanders in his recent article examined 100 of these samples and concluded that the entire geologic record was shown to have been laid down by one event at the same time consistent with the biblical account of a young earth and a worldwide flood. Now, we can even get samples from the Precambrian that contain excess amounts of carbon-14. However, to be most favorable to evolution, I'm going to ignore anything in the Precambrian. I'm going to stick to the oldest biological samples of 500 million years old with excess carbon-14 ages. I think the carbon-14 is not entirely accurate, but let's say the ages are correct. I personally claim that the Earth is 6,000 years old. Therefore, I might be out on my age by a factor of, say, 10. The evolutionary time scale, however, is out by a factor of at least 10,000. I'm willing to accept carbon-14 dating is accurate. How about you? But wait. If the Earth is young, and all these layers were laid down by one event, such as Noah's Flood, then that means we have not had enough time for evolution. That means we were created. Which brings up the question, who is that creator? I would suggest to you that creator is none other than Jesus Christ. And you might want to ask yourself the question, what does my creator want of me? Perhaps you should be asking today what the creator would want of you. See you later.